Okay, so art one, what we're looking at today is drawing a front facing portrait. So what I have for you here is my first attempt here at this one, the practice drawing. And uh, one thing that you should really take into consideration is whenever you draw a picture of a person's face using only lines, it's never gonna quite look like that person. So the human face doesn't really have lines, it's got more shading and things. And that's gonna be part two of our drawing process here. Today in part one, we wanna just transfer the photo here to a line drawing that we'll have here. So how do we get started? First thing, you're gonna be using your iPad. I'm using a photo because I am currently recording on my iPad. And uh, I'm gonna have that next to some drawing paper that is taped in place and a couple sheets of it to give me a nice little um, cushion to draw on. You should use a light pencil, like one of your 2H pencils, that would work pretty well. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a crosshair in place, like the crosshair that I have here, and I'll even take a couple minutes to measure it just to make sure that it's all nice and even, and then my crosshair has a nice 90 degree angle in the center. So I'm gonna set it up right in the middle of my page. Okay, as I start my drawing here, I'm gonna line it up with my picture. I'm not necessarily gonna trace off of this exactly. I'm gonna use it as a series of measurements and I'm gonna use it to compare the things that I wanna draw on my, uh, my paper here. First thing I wanna do is I wanna establish what we call the basic unit of measurement. And that's to me gonna be his eye. I'm gonna use his eye to figure out just how wide and how tall this whole drawing should be. So. I'm not actually gonna measure it here yet. I'm gonna actually just draw something over here and use that as a measurement. So I know that uh, his face is five eyes in width. So whatever size I make an eye, I just transfer that as I go. So let's say I say the corner of his eye is gonna be right here. What that means is that the other corner be right there. That width then, between the eyes in the middle, that's one eye width. So if I measure that over here, there's another eye, there's another eye. So one, two, three, four, five. Five eye widths total, and that gives me my whole human face width here. If you remember from the video on Friday using this guy as a demo, this side of his face here is not one full eye width over here, so it's about halfway like this. So I'll just use that as my measurement on that side. And again, whatever face you used, you probably found that they didn't all work out perfectly every time, the five eye widths. But now once I have those there, I can now figure out how wide is his head compared to how tall it is. So it's almost uh, half as wide as it is tall. So if I take the width here, about here Let's say the top of his head should end somewhere here and the distance from here to these three points this line's halfway so his chin should take that distance again move down here so now I know the width of his head here's the top of his head here's his chin here's the side of his face now I can connect him so I look at his chin here and I can just kind of like sketch my way across. Sometimes I'll go from one side to the other. If I look at where the line goes through, his head kind of like curves outward a little bit and then back in. So I'm gonna try to figure out where all these things are gonna meet. So that was sort of a halfway point here. His head's going up this way. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a, a measurement and I'll pull my pencil up to a line on his jaw here and then I'll move that over here to figure out that angle more accurately without having just to sort of guess it. And that's really helpful to me. Um, for that to work, you gotta have your two papers parallel to one another. If it's like this and I try to do a measurement, 
it's going to be way off. So I got to make sure that they are parallel. And I'm going to measure from the blue line here. I'll do a little angle measurement. Same thing on the other side. Start up here. This is just a slightly more complicated version of tracing things from life and just kind of looking at them. So our goal for this drawing, we want to use what we know now about the measurements of the human face to put everything in place. So more so, what I'm concerned with here is are all of your proportions lining up more than does it look like who it's supposed to look like? That's a different question. That's a lot harder. Uh, so now the top of his head, it's mostly covered by hair. So really what I'm gonna do here is just put in a rough shape for the top of his head, just make him look like a big old egg. Because I'm going to draw his hair anyway when I get there. So you won't be able to see this outline anyway. I'll just put it there to kind of put it in place. So now that I have these measurements in place, I have his face, I can start doing more important details like his eyes. Uh, so I know his eyes exist between these two lines here. I have his eye sitting somewhere up here, not right on the line. So I'll say that's the bottom of his eye. Important things to do. Measure the height of his eye, compare it to the width. This guy, his eye is about half again as tall as it is wide. So if I were to measure half that, top of his eye sits right here, bottom of his eye sits right there. And I can think a corner of his eye would be about here. I'm gonna look at it. Try to imagine there's a straight line going across. So I'll take measurements like this. I'll measure that angle of his eye. Most time, the upper lid can be done with like three angles. You got one going up, one going across, one going down. So you got kind of a long angle here. I'm gonna get in close and look at the corner of his eye. Kind of swells up comes back down, rounds, and then comes back up. What I want to see in your eyes is that you're, you're really carefully observing areas like this. Even if you don't get them right. You can take a lot of time trying to get this stuff just right. Uh, I'm going to go kind of quick here, so I'm not here forever. I feel like this eye is maybe too big, but hey, that's okay. I'm going to keep moving with it because the sake of the demo here. Keep making co uh, comparisons though. Take a look at the angle of like the corners of his eyes from one corner to the other. Make sure they're going uh, in line with each other. I think I made that a little too high, but uh, like I said, if I was gonna take more time, I'd come back and look into it. Here we have his corner of this eye. It's gonna sit right here. Corner's gonna be about there. And one eye is half as tall as the other or as it, as it is wide, rather. Now, one key reason that eyes often don't look quite right is because you try to draw them with lines when all you have here is all this shading. And that's what we need in the next round, is getting that shading in place. So you've got an angle that kind of turns down a little bit here.
other size seems a little small. Sometimes you just have to make little adjustments. That's why it's important to draw lightly. Draw the pupils. When you draw like the inside of the pupil or the iris, you want the bottom of the iris to touch the bottom of the lid. You'll notice that always happens. If it's not, person was going to look kind of bug-eyed and freaked out. You got to make sure those irises are going uh, from the top lid down to the bottom and touch it. Now the rest of it I just put in place here using these lines. So I know that his mouth sits halfway between the crosshair and the bottom here. So if I do a measurement, his mouth will sit right about here. And that's right between his lips. Now, it's going to be as wide as the center of the eyes here. That's how wide his mouth will be. Now, I want to find out how tall should I make his lips. So if I measure from the crosshair to the top of the lip, and then I compare it to something like the length here, the width. His lip is uh, half as tall from here to there as it is that width. So what I do is I figure out what's halfway. A little dash. Now I'm going to observe this little shape he has here, how that kind of moves. I can check some angles here. Now lips, they're going to look very funny before you shade them because everything that's drawn in line is going to look really funny. It's going to look like he's wearing like almost like wax lips. Now his mouth over here doesn't quite end on that line, so I see there's a little gap, so I'm going to keep myself a little gap right here. Over here, same thing. So what I'm drawing right now is just a guy. This is not the complete final drawing. This is my guide for how I'm going to fill the whole thing in and get it shaded in my next round. I just want to make sure that everything's in the right spot, more or less. And I'm going to check the height of this lip compared to the bottom lip. And the bottom lip's almost as tall as the top lip here. He's got like a little gap under his lip, but that, that's all right. That's kind of like it is now. He's got a slightly uneven bottom lip. So noticing these things is what's going to turn your portrait to be a more unique person than to be just something very simple and general. Now again, it's going to look weird, of course, just lines. So don't let that stop you. Distance from the nose to the bottom of the mouth, it's almost halfway. This distance can really fool you. Do some measurements, compare it to the eyes, compare it to the width. Do all kinds of measurements to figure out where it should go. Um, so that's where his nose is going to sit right here. Now his nose is no wider than the insides of his eyes. So the nostril should be no wider than these two dashes here. So I'm going to figure out rounded bottom part of the nose here. Moves up, curves around, right out to here. On the other nostril, it sweeps up here and stops. And the outside of his nose is over here. 
I'm just going to indicate this really slightly. Just observing what's going on right here for this space on this side. I'm going to shade that in when I get there. My nose, I don't really need too much more than that. I can indicate this sort of round shape. A lot of this is taken care of with shading. I don't need to bother myself with that just yet. Just like the eyes, there's a lot more going on up here with these wrinkles and lines and things. That I have to do more with shading. So, to get this complete, I want you to have all the features. Eyes, nose, mouth, ears, and hair ready to go for the next class so we can shade it and put it all together. Now, this can be frustrating. Just keep making sure that you're measuring and you're comparing things to one another to figure out where they go. All right, when you're done, make sure you take a picture of just the line drawing, turn it in on Schoology.